So we continue on until the dawn with a uh, circle session uh, must. Um, this is a brand new film. I believe it was 2016. Let me take a look. I try when I try to do um, pull classics. I try to get them as near and dear to our time as possible because usually I, what I want with cult classics is to, to say something about what's going on now. Yeah, 2016. Ow! And that good. Good gravy. This guy is good. Wham! Make no mistake. You couldn't be just good. You could be the best. Hardcore Henry. This is the name of the film. Okay. Again, when I say cult classics, what do I always preface this with? Don't watch them with kids, okay? There's a reason for that. They're not for kids. These are like for movies for adults, okay? And I don't mean adult movies. I mean movies for adults, okay? Um, they're uh, films that are exceptional in some type of format. And the reason is, is because this one is just straight up good. Now, I want to give uh, a warning to... To you guys if you are planning on watching Hardcore Henry. Um, be aware, it is all shot from first person. First person is similar to Doom or, uh, I don't know, whatever games are out now. Good God, I just dated myself. Um, you know that Wolfenstein? Yeah, that's what all the kids like. They like the Wolfenstein. Um, but, you know, whatever first person, Skyrim, Skyfall, Sky... Uh, Lucy in the Sky, it doesn't matter. But whatever it is, it's first person where, you know, you're, you're like shooting with a gun. Okay? That's basically what this film is. is that it's basically an homage to the video game. Um, which is cool. Now, I'm not personally into video games. That's just me. Um, I don't think that they're uncool. I certainly think that they have their aspects that are definitely cool. Um, but I just don't get into them. I like film, and that's pretty much it. I haven't played a video game since Bond Goldeneye back on Nintendo 64. Back in my day, we had four buttons and we had a, um, a thing that moved like that. Yeah, that's just the way that those things go. Here comes the notorious Betty again. I told you, she is a lover of all things that I say on the camera. She just wants to be a part of the action. She wants some action. Um, I was going to start singing. Uh, uh, what was that? I don't know. I like the nightlife. I like the boogie. She likes the action. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, you don't want to hear me sing. Nobody does. I do karaoke. Trust me. I know. All right. So, Hardcore Henry. Why is it so good? Well, there are many different layers to the story besides it is in first person. Now, again, if you get queasy from cameras moving, like shaking and doing all that kind of stuff, don't watch this film. It'll take you five seconds to be like, nah, this ain't my cup of tea. All right. But... If you can handle uh, taking an experimental kind of ride on a first-person journey, then Hardcore Henry is it for you. Um, I don't know who actually made this film. I know Universal distributed it, but it looks like STX. But it looks like it may have come from Russia. It is entirely possible from, uh, from uh, all intents and purposes that this may have been sto sort of started in Russia. Okay, Russia does have a good history with film. Not a good history politically, but a good history with film. Um, uh, Sergei Eisenstein was the premier Russian director of all time. He's one of the best directors of all time. That's an easy, easy thing to say. But um, anyway, this one um, basically starts off with this guy waking up in the sky uh, hospital and blah, blah, blah. And it proceeds from there. Obviously, there's multiple killings and he has to save a girl. It's pretty standard plot. So why is this one so good? Well, one is that it's just an excellent movie. Like, it, it's all told in first person. And it's all told like it's taken place right here and right now. Okay? So it's not like he takes a break. Um, it's just that <coughs> it constantly goes from... It just It's just... A, I can't remember what the term is when it goes in, in time. I mean, there are breaks when he... When his computer program shuts down and stuff like that. But, I mean, for the most part, you're just watching, like, a day in the life of Hardcore Henry. Henry is his name. Um, but it is an exceptional film. It is very cool to watch. It is very neat. It has a very, very um, dry view of the world, which I 
really, really like in filmmaking because a dry view is basically what the world is. The world is very dry. It's very cut and dry. There are things that are immutable. I know that filmmakers for a lifetime have tried to say, hey, no, but they're not. But yeah, they are. And that's why it's life. We go to movies for different reasons, but I do like that because you're dealing with a fantastical element, which is that he's a, he's a computerized killer. Okay, and he has to save his, his girl or whoever he's in love with and blah, blah, blah. It is a very, very good movie. I highly recommend watching it. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, I have it on Blu-ray. I think Blu-ray is the appropriate format for this. Um, like, if they put it in 4K, I wouldn't get it, and I'll tell you why. Because it wasn't shot on 4K, okay? Let, I, I, I have to explain this, and I will very briefly. Get the top quality for what was available at that time, okay? Um, now, certainly with actual film stock, that's different. Um, because you would literally have to get out a projector. And um, to be completely honest with you, with, with the way that film works now, I think it's something in like 96 millimeter or something. It's something crazy like that. Um, it, it's impossible to buy a camera like that to even show that. Okay, so you got to take the next best thing, which right now would be 4K. Okay, so if it's shot in film, it's different. Um, you can get a lot more out of film because film itself... And I don't mean to give you a history lesson in cameras, but I'm going to. So um, if you want to go ahead and take a nap, um, it'll be done shortly. Cameras that shoot in film, and I'm talking about film. Like, remember the old Kodak where you pulled it out, and that's film? Infinitely better than anything still that digital has to offer. Okay, I think still. Um, and the reason is, is because they just... They just pick up more. It's um, it's it's so much m more um, uh, visceral. You can get so many more colors uh, with with uh, with a film stock than you can with digital stock. It's just impossible for digital to copy what film did. Now, what it has done is it's made uh, filmmaking incredibly cheap, which is really good. Um, it's similar to the VHS movement of the '80s. It, it made it a much more accessible. For people to make films, even though they were of lower quality uh, film, um, but it has made it, which has made rise to a lot of great films. But film stock itself, um, even when you and even 36 millimeter, I think still probably beats 4K. And the reason is, is because it's a digital format. It can only pick up so <coughs> so many so many uh, colors. That's just it. It just can only pick up so many colors. It may have a million that it can pick up, but like uh, 36 millimeter probably picks up like an infinite amount more than that. So it's just not possible. But also keep in mind that the reason some films look bad in film stock is because film eats light. It eats light. You have to have light. Even shooting on this crappy... Uh, uh, digital format, you can see how much light I have to have in here in order for you to be able to see me. Um, it's just not possible um, for uh, uh, anything picked, has to eat light, but film especially eats light. It just eats it. I mean, I am sure back in the day when they were shooting on 36 millimeter, I'm sure that they had like, like, probably 20 lights on someone. And that's why they shot on sound stages and did all that kind of stuff because it had to be controlled. They had to be able to manipulate the light the way that they wanted it. That's why lighting is almost a lost art now in the digital world because it just doesn't, it's not the same. You don't have to use lighting the same way. Um, most films now, for whatever reason, are shot in a high key, which I don't understand at all. Um, you look at the, the uh, greatest films... Uh, one of the greatest film movements of all time, which was film noir, and those were almost all shot in low key. Okay, Double Indemnity. I mean, you know, I can name a thousand, but I'm not going to. But um, but there's a lot of films in the 50s that were film noir. You know, the the Kiss of the Spider Woman or whatever you want to call it, the Maltese Falcon, blah blah blah. And those are all shot in low key because it kind of gives this mysterious and dark element. It makes something more unseemly, okay? Um, and uh, that's good for setting a mood. 
But like you look at a Marvel film and they're so bright. I mean, yeah, they manipulate light in certain areas, like when they're in like the catacombs or the underbelly of the world or whatever. It's dark. But that's not the same as setting a key to a film that is supposed to be dark. Okay? Um, and The Watchmen, uh, which was uh, uh, probably the greatest superhero film out so far there are definitely good ones out that are on par with it but probably and it's weird because it's the antithesis of the superhero genre was still not shot in a specific key which is weird i mean yeah it's darker than most film of the than than any of the superhero films i've ever seen but it, you still have elements of light in them which is very bizarre to me um, why they would why they wouldn't uh, take that because that's like directing 101 is you have to choose the key of your film and by key I mean whether it's going to be a bright film or a dark film or somewhere in between um, these all these directors have picked somewhere in between now definitely there are high key films and those are usually like romantic comedies and stuff like that kids films you know they're very bright and colorful and and all that kind of stuff and then you have darker films which are like uh, film noirs or something that deals with like the godfather is shot almost exclusively in a low-key um uh format but again like that i don't know why that's not a uh taken seriously anymore it's like one of the lost uh pieces of directing anyway i don't mean to get off on a side tangent i don't even remember why i started that tangent to begin with um because this film is not shot in any particular key either, but its coloring is very, very good. And I think the reason I, I brought it up now that I'm starting to piece it back together was that um, that um, film eats light. And so, you know, it uh, that was what I was talking about. But this film was obviously shot on digital because there are a lot of digital effects. It makes it a lot easier to do digital effects if you shoot in a digital format. And that's why a lot of films are shot in 4k and digital but at this time all that was available was blu-ray so that would have been the top that would have been the top that was available for commercial now obviously you can find like probably higher quality than that but um that's an exhaustive search so and 4k i don't think they could really do it it justice except for the sound because for whatever reason whenever they re they uh, reduce films they can get their sounds so good i don't know why it's so much easier to uh, clean up sound, that's something for more of a of a Foley artist or someone to explain or whoever does the, the actual sound editing and stuff, they would be able to explain why it's easier to do. And it's probably just because it's a lot easier to record and manipulate sound than it is to record and manipulate film. So that's probably why, but Blu-ray is its, its best. Now, I'm sure that there's a 3D option that is available. Now, I haven't tried that, but I'm sure it's pretty, I'm sure it's probably pretty good. Um, this was around the time when, when uh, 3D was at its peak, so that would be kind of why they also did this film at that time. But it's also a very dark look at the superhero genre. Um, you know, this guy's not a particular hero in any way, shape, or form. He's just a guy trying to save this girl, and he'll do it at whatever means are necessary. So it's a very, very good film, and again, I highly recommend that you watch it. When I, when, I, when I give the top 10 list, I'm sure you've seen most of them, and if you haven't, there's probably a reason why you don't watch some of the films that I mentioned, because you're just not interested in them. But when it comes to these, these are ones that if you are remotely interested in film, I highly recommend that you watch. Okay? So I'm going to leave it at that, and until then, I'll be to Zen.